All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about paramagnetism and diamagnetism. So one of the main things, uh, one of the main advantages to molecular orbital theory over uh, Lewis theory or valence bond theory is that molecular orbital theory can account for many uh, experimental observations. And one of those particular observations involves how uh, certain substances uh, interact with magnetic fields. So a paramagnetic substance is attracted to a magnetic field and the reason why a paramagnetic substance is uh, attracted to a magnetic field is because the presence of unpaired electrons, basically. Uh, those unpaired electrons have an angular uh, momentum that generates these, uh, these tiny magnetic fields of their own. So anytime you have a molecule that has unpaired electrons, uh, that molecule is said to be paramagnetic and is therefore attracted to a magnetic field. In contrast, we have diamagnetic substances, which are uh, repelled by a magnetic field, and they contain no unpaired electrons. So it's, it's very easy. Once, once you do the molecular orbitals, you look and see if there's any uh, unpaired electrons. If there is, is at least one unpaired electron, then that means you have a paramagnetic substance that will be attracted to a magnetic field. And if you don't have any unpaired electrons at all, then that means you're going to have a diamagnetic substance that will be uh, repelled by a magnetic field. So uh, let's go through <clears throat> the simplest uh, of all examples. Let's go through the H2 molecule real quick. Let's, let's just go back to that and uh, we'll see if we can um, figure out whether H2 is uh, paramagnetic or uh, diamagnetic. So here we go. Okay, so the two atomic orbitals on the outside, those are going to be 1s atomic orbitals. And the two molecular orbitals, this one's going to be the sigma 1s, and this one over here is going to be the sigma star 1s. And for hydrogen, uh, the 1s atomic orbitals, each one has one electron, and when they combine to form uh, molecular orbitals, they'll fill up the uh, sigma 1s orbital. So this is the molecular orbital diagram uh, for the H2 molecule. So is H2 paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Uh, to me it looks like it would be diamagnetic because I don't see any uh, unpaired electrons. They're all, they're all paired. There's only two of them and they're in a pair. So H2 is diamagnetic and would therefore be uh, repelled by a magnetic field, not attracted to it. So let's go through a different molecule. That was H2. Uh, now let's go over the O2 molecule. So let's see if I can get it all in the screen. I think I managed. Okay, so here we have the uh, molecular orbital diagram for the O2 molecule. So we have uh, oxygen uh, atomic orbitals on the left and right, and I've actually already filled in the uh, atomic orbitals. Um, oxygen has uh, six valence electrons, and uh, these uh, the, the electron configurations would look like this. The two S uh, orbitals are full, and then uh, for the two p orbitals, you have uh, two half-filled orbitals and then one full p orbital. Those are for each of the two uh, oxygen atoms. And when they uh, combine to form molecular orbitals, uh, the molecular orbitals fill up as follows. You have the sigma 2s orbital is full, so is the sigma uh, star 2s molecular orbital. And then uh, to do these, we just fill them in increasing energy order. And looks like we have two, four, six, eight electrons total. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. Notice the pattern by which I filled up the electrons. We, we must follow uh, Hund's rule when we uh, do these molecular orbitals, meaning when, we, uh, when there's two uh, degenerate orbitals. In other words, if there's two or more uh, orbitals that have the same energy, so as in the case of the pi 2p and the pi 2p star molecular orbitals, these are two uh, degenerate, two pairs of degenerate orbitals. Whenever we have degenerate orbitals, what we need to do is uh, populate the electrons singly with paralleled spins, and then once they're all half full, then we begin adding the electrons and filling them up. So that's what we've done here. So instead of these two electrons, populating one of the pi star uh, 2p uh, molecular orbitals, 
you have each pi star, uh, each pi star 2p molecular orbital is, uh, is half full and contains one electron. So based on that, uh, you know, let's go back to our original question. Is it paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Well, there are unpaired electrons in the O2 molecule. There are two unpaired electrons. And since we have unpaired electrons, that, mean that, that means that uh, O2 is paramagnetic. So if you, uh, if you expose uh, O2 to a magnetic field, um, it will be attracted to the magnetic field. And this is actually confirmed by experiments. There's actually an experiment you can do where you, uh, you suspend liquid oxygen, O2, in, uh, between the poles of a magnet, and it stays suspended. It doesn't fall down. Why? Again, unpaired electrons create these uh, tiny uh, magnetic fields with their, with their angular momentum, and that is what results in the, uh, the attraction to, a, to an external magnetic field.